Hi everyone, here's a tutorial on painting pink roses. This design might seem like it's more complicated than my other tutorials, but I promise you it is simply that the design has more to it. The basics are all the same. So to begin, you're going to be using um, 10 colors in all. Um, full color list will be in the description below as long as the other materials that I've used. Um, you're going to be begin um, using a permanent red for the very interior of the rose and anywhere where it's shaded. And you will be using colors of, of fluorescent red, which is fantastic. Um, I, it's a kind of a little trick that I use on a lot of my paintings that have pinks or purples. It adds like a vibrance to the flower since a lot of flowers have some iridescent. So you're going to be using the permanent red and you're going to be using that to make a salmon pink, a dark pink, and a light baby pink. So that permanent red you will be mixing with different concentrations of the, a titanium white along with the fluorescent red. So the, the red goes in all the little creases and crevices. The darkest parts of the rose gets that per, pure permanent red. The rest of the uh, rose, the full rose that you're painting right now, or you see me painting, is using uh, mixtures of the fluorescent red with the permanent red um, to make a salmon pink. Um, and using, so you'll be using the permanent red and all the cre creases and crevices, the darkest places that are in the rows. And as you move out from that, um, like on this curved petal here, you see the permanent red is used in the creases and in the shadow part under where the, the petal has a slight fold back in it. Um, and working forward from that is gradually just adding more titanium white um, on the curved part of the petal to give it that illusion of having a curve. And I usually start in the middle. Um, you can start from the outer edges out. So what I've used here, I wanna talk about the shadow, the deep, deep shadow that I'm adding around the outer petals. Um, I added a little bit of yellow to that petal. Um, you'll see it's sort of um, got a brighter yellow down at the base, but that deep, deep shadow, I used a permanent red and mixed it with some burnt umber and a little bit of a phalo blue and it made a really nice deep um, rusty red and a little bit more um, add a little bit more of the phalo blue in order to give you a sort of a purplish tint which also is nice coming out of that deep deep shadow um, and so I'm working my way around the outer petals now and again just sort of adding the permanent red in the deepest areas mixing with the um to make like a dark pink and then mixing um the permanent red with that fluorescent red um to a re make a really really nice um highlighted um color and then adding the titanium white on areas where that petal might be a little bit flatter and adds um like a nice pop um where the petal would be having hitting the sunlight. So you can see I add a little bit of yellow behind this bottom petal because it in the photo that reference that I used, there was a lot of different variation of shades in this rose. And to me, that's what makes um, flower painting look a little bit more realistic is when you add different shades and tones to, to colors, it makes them more realistic when there are variations. You might have areas that have a little bit more of a purple shade, a little bit more of a yellow shade, um, and then, you know, the brightest, that bright, light uh, baby pink all the way at the tips. And again, working on these outer petals, which really were more, they're a little bit more of a solid with um, sort of a peachy pink too. So I have added a little bit of the um, vermilion um, with the titanium white and a little tiny bit of the permanent red um, and that makes a really really nice light peach color perfect for those outer petals where they're sometimes when roses open as they start the the outer petals um, before they die they get a faded look so you want that outer petal to sort of look like that now I'm starting on the secondary um, flower which is more of a, a partially open so again 
Um, this one I made a little bit more of a peachy pink. So I'm using the vermilion more in the darkest areas with a little bit of the permanent red mixing with, um, to make like a salmon pink and the titanium white. So again, the more um, lighter colors, the titanium white mixture gets added to the outer petals of the um, partially open flower. Um, and there's about seven buds on this painting too. So there's one fully open um, rose flower, there's a partially open flower, and seven flower buds. So again, the principles are all the same on this painting. Darker, you know, towards the bottom and working out away from the, the dark areas, the recessed areas, you get lighter and lighter and lighter. Now I um, started on the buds and those are just a mixture of the fluorescent red with the permanent um, red. You don't have a whole lot of variations in there um, because they're hidden. Um, I'm adding the buds, um, which is a mixture. The stems are a mixture of burnt umber and hooker's green and with a little bit of a light olive green on the outside. So there's a lot of flower, or, um, a lot of leaves. They're tightly formed. And now I'm starting on the leaves. The leaves are a mixture of a hooker's green with a phalo blue. The phalo blue makes a great, great shadow color. And actually I based all my leaves in that mixture of the hooker's green with the phalo. Um, anytime you're painting, you're building up layers through your painting. You don't get the full effect of beautiful shaded leaves or petals when you're initially starting out. So I'm basing all of these leaves in that mixture of a phalo blue with the hooker's green. And I'm going to leave that little bit of the deepest um, shadow uh, next to the flower or where... Um, a leaf is under another leaf. I leave that dark. Now I'm adding the background in because I wanted to finish um, the background, which is that green gray, beautiful green gray color. Now I'm going back in and adding final detail and making those roses sort of pop off the background. So I'm working on the buds a little bit more now, a little bit more of the burnt umber to the stems and adding a deeper hooker's green on the outside of the buds and finalizing that detail, going around um, each edge, um, giving it a really crisp line with using um, hooker's green and then lightening those areas where the sun would be hitting with the olive green and even a little bit of titanium white just to sort of make the brightest, lightest green where that sunlight coming from the le upper left would be hitting those buds. <laughs> And there's two little buds in between the uh, fully open rows and the um, partially open rows. And you can see what I'm doing now to give that illusion on that leaf, the lower leaves. Um, I am adding a lot more into that mixture that I began with, the hooker's green and the light olive green. And keep adding a little bit, um, a little tiny bit of yellow ochre into that mix so that the upper left side of those leaves um, are lighter and brighter and a little bit more yellow. It gives them a little bit more, um, oh, it looks like the sunlight is hitting them uh, and it makes them pop off the canvas. You don't have to add complete exact detail to every leaf, just a few leaves where you want someone to look um, like the leaves, the two larger leaves below the flower itself. I added a lot more detail to them. So on the leaves themselves, I just keep adding a lot more, a little bit more titanium white to that mix um, so that a lot more detail sort of pops out. And I'm just going to continue. The stems are a burnt umber with um, green mixed in. And finishing off those stems, um, it's burnt umber, hooker's green, a light olive green and titanium white. The mix gets lighter and lighter and lighter. So this just about concludes this uh, tutorial on um, the pink roses. I hope you give this a try. I promise you it's not more complicated than the others. The processes are all the same. It's just a lot more, um, the design has a lot more to it. So I do hope you try this. If you have any questions on anything I've done, please drop me a comment 
in the comment section. I'll be happy to um, answer it for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe my channel for more content. And thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.